once again, good morning, everybody, to uh, Cross Christian Fellowship Week 66. Hope everybody had a blessed week in the Lord. And we also uh, are uh, grateful for our uh, our web audience out there. We uh, greet them as well, and thank you for them for tuning in in our broadcast here. And uh, just a few short announcements, and one of them is that we have a little black box in the back there for your your offerings and uh, how awesome it is to be uh, in partnership with the Lord in uh, in the work that He's doing through this church here. And also, we uh, oh, and also for those in uh, the web, uh, if you want to give, you can you can do so through cross66.org, cross66.org. Also, uh, we continue to take uh, donations for. Uh, clothing and hygiene items that uh, we could be a blessing to those who uh, who are in need, uh, who need them and who ask for them. So, what a wonderful thing to be able to be prepared to bless others. Uh, after services today and uh, throughout, we uh, we have an outreach to uh, uh, to uh, young people in independent living and at-risk teens, so if you want to be part of it, you can join us and uh, we go visit them and we, uh, we uh, uh, fellowship with them, we have something to eat with them and we listen to them and, and we try to help them in, in whatever, however we can in whatever they're going through. So what a, what a wonderful ministry that is and uh, uh, I'm surely blessed by that as well. Also, we have a men's Bible study uh, March 7th at 9 a.m. Uh, for study of the Bible, for a coffee, and for fellowship. We have a special guest uh, uh, this uh, coming uh, also, and he'll give us a devotion and, uh, and tell, us, tell us what he does in his ministry. And his name is Clay Schwab from the Aspen Project Ministry and Operation Safe Child. And he will be our speaker then. So come and uh, join us and be part of that and be blessed by what he has to say. We have a youth rally coming up. We finally nailed down the, the, the date. And the date is August 1st. So we're having a, a meeting on that, the 29th of this month. Uh, no, let's see, we are in, uh, the 29th of March, so next month. So anyway, youth rally, August 1st, 1st, so plan, plan ahead and write that on your calendar, so be part of that. And we Brand all need to sneak. He said this February 29th. Oh, is it, oh, okay, did I say, yeah, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I uh, misspoke on that name, it is February 29th. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. It's a leap year, that's why it's confusing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no excuses. Okay. Anyway, uh, Youth Rally, uh, August 1st, meeting on that is February 29th at 9 o'clock in the morning. So I think that that's probably a Saturday. Yeah. And also, we have a, a missions trip coming up to Mexico, and it's a work and witness, so we're going to over there and help them in, uh, what is that again, Mark? What is it? We, we may be helping them with the teen home, doing some repairs on the teen oh, home. Or there's a teen home over there? And, yes. And uh, we're helping them with the repairs over there. So uh, if you want to go, uh, again with Mark for details on that, because you will need a uh, passport anymore to go ahead and Passport do. and um, we're asking for people to, to chip in for gas too. Passport and uh, just uh, help us be able to get over there by chipping for, for gas money. Anybody? <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway, that's coming up uh, July 11th. Uh, 11th to the 19th. So if anybody has been part of a missions trip like that, a short-term missions trip, it's, uh, it's quite uh, uh, a joy, a delight, and it's, it's uh, it's an experience to grow in the Lord and to be able to uh, uh, minister to others, to share with others the, the love of God and to, uh, 
and to, to glorify God by what he's doing in uh, doing in and through us and, and they're a blessing as well to us. We, we all have different things that we could learn from each other. So, so be part of that. That'd be a blessing. Then also we have <clears throat> April 3rd at 7 p.m. And this is part of the recovery uh, ministry. We have a, uh, his name is Bobby Bowen. And he will be bringing us music in a concert. It's, it's Bobby Bowen Family Band. Oh, Bobby Bowen, Bowen Family Band. And he will be giving us a concert. Uh, part of the recovery uh, ministry that we have here at, uh, at our church here. So anyway, uh, April 3rd, 7 p.m., uh, come and listen to, the, uh, to uh, Bobby Bowen and his band. And uh, we'll all be giving honor and praise to the Lord for that as well. So how exciting is that? Anyway, uh, and Pastor Mark will be uh, at, uh, today at Ezekiel 28. So have your Bibles marked at Ezekiel 28. So uh, with that, join me with prayer as we continue our services. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we love you, we worship you, and praise you, Lord. And just thank you, Lord, for all that you do in our lives, Lord. And, and thank you that uh, the good news about Tracy and her, her speedy recovery, Lord. And uh, you're so awesome, Lord. And just uh, we praise you, Lord, for that, Lord. So thank you so, so very much. We pray today, Lord, that uh, thank you for Cross Christian Fellowship for, for, for being here and and that, uh, we're, that we would be able to be a uh, uh, light upon a hill, Lord, to, to reach many in this neighborhood and that we be a witness to you and that, uh, and that uh, we would be able to uh, uh, invite others who walk uh, down Central here and in our neighbors around us to, to be part of Cross Christian Fellowship. That, uh, that we would be blessed by, the, by your word, Lord. And we just lift up Pastor Mark today as he presents us with Ezekiel 28, and that, um, that, um, that your word, that we take your word to heart, and that we live out your word in our lives, Lord. So thank you for that opportunity, and thank you for, for this church, Lord, that you have uh, put here, ordained here today, Lord. And, and we just... Um, do this for, we pray you for our good and for your glory, Lord. Thank you, in Christ we pray. Amen.
So we are in Ezekiel 28. And last week, when we were in Ezekiel 27, one of the things that we were looking at, the main thing we were looking at was pride, right? And, we're, we're in, in, and this is a continuation of, of that topic. Um, last week, when we were looking at it, it was, it was God was dealing with a nation. But this week, he's dealing with the king. And it's important for us to, to look at not it's important for us to, to look at dealing with pride not just not just as a group but also on an individual basis and not just on an individual basis but also as a group because because as a group we can get we can sometimes we can be prideful if we're not careful right and, and and a lot of times obviously we know that a lot of times in our lives we are prideful on our own right we we do get prideful in some areas that we need to be very very careful about. And, and what God was talking about when he's talking to the nation of Tyre, and then when, when, when we look at the king of Tyre today, is that we need to, we need to address our hearts. We need to allow God to, to look into our hearts and, and see where we're at. And to see uh, the things that, that need to change, the things that we need to let go of. If, if, we, if we don't let go of these things that, that cause us pride in our lives, then it's hard for us to, to hear what God has in store for us and to see how God wants to grow us, how he wants to stretch us. And, and, and we have to be careful of that. And, and these are the reasons why God, in so many ways, right, as, as, as we look at, as he dealt with Israel, but so, in so, so many ways, he's also talking to us and in, 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 in wanting to have our hearts transformed so that we grow close to him, right? Because, because he's, he's so worried about our hearts, he, I shouldn't say worried, he's so concerned for our hearts that, that he will, in many ways, try to address them. And, and, and in so many, in, in so many ways, he'll, he'll ask us to take a look and, and, and have our, our hearts changed by him. So I'm going to ask you guys, um, hopefully you're ready to turn to Ezekiel 28. I'm going to ask you guys to please stand with me. We'll pray and then we'll, we'll get into the word together. Father, we, we again thank you that you allow us to come together to meet with you and with each other and, and, and getting into your word. And we ask that your word is opened up to us to reveal the things that we need to hear from you. We ask you to fill our hearts and our minds with your spirit so that we can be obedient to the call that you've given us and, and, and the changes that you want to do in our lives. We thank you that you're so loving, so long-suffering, so patient with us that you give us an opportunity to return to, to, to do what you would, want, you would want for us. We thank you for all these things and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ezekiel 28. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, Because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a God, though you set your heart as the heart of a God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasures. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you set your heart as the heart of gold, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Will you still say before him who stays, slays you, I am a God? But you shall be a man and not a God in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die in the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of the aliens. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. 
By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with the violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom from the, for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before the kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Sidon and prophesy against her, saying, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Sidon. I will glor be glorified in your midst, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I execute judgments in her and am hauled in her. For I send, will send pestilence upon her and blood in her streets. The wounded shall be judged in her midst by the sword against her on every side. Then they shall know I am the Lord. And there shall be no longer be a pricking, bri a pricking briar or painful thorn for the house of Israel from among all who are around them, who despise them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered and am hallowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles, then they will dwell in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob, and they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgments and all those around them who despise them, then they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. So God is, as, as, as we already talked about last week when we looked at 27, God was addressing the nation. And, and, and remember that as he was addressing the nation, that the things that they were dealing with is that they were feeling like because they had all this great stuff built up, all this treasure built up, they had these beautiful streets and, and all of them, they, were, they, they felt like they, they were uh, um, a nation that was being used to, to, to trade with many others and, and, and already looking at when Jerusalem was taken into captivity that they were going to start trading from the south and, and that they were going to become this big nation, right? That as a group, they, they forgot that God was working. They forgot to see how God was working and, and, and even correcting Israel. They weren't seeing the, seeing the example that God was using to, to tell Israel as a nation, they have strayed away. And, and so now here is Tyre, and they, they're, they're straying away even further, and, and they're becoming full, more and full of themselves. And so God was, in 27, was talking to the nation, and now what he's doing is, is now he's addressing the leaders. And why is it important to address the leaders? Because as the leaders, it's, it's, it's the leaders who lead people to either do what's right by God or to walk away. So many times when we look at scripture, we see that God is, is, is addressing those, uh, 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 um, those who are in leadership and those who are of his people because the, even his people are leaders. Believe it or not, believe it or not, guys, whether you want to or not, in a sense, as followers of God, you are leaders. You may not be leaders in such a, uh, and I'm not talking about being leaders in somebody who may be a, a leader of a church or, or a leader of a ministry, what I'm saying is, is that in God's eyes, we are leaders to, to people in the world that we're either going to lead people to follow Christ and, and, and to have God change their hearts, or we're going to lead them in the direction that, that they, they go astray. So we need to be careful and, and ask God to, to continually search our hearts and, and, and make sure that, that our hearts are right with Him, that, that, we are, that we're being transformed. And in our transformation, that that we're allowing people to see what God is doing in our lives, how, how we're becoming more loving, how we're becoming more, more willing to be corrected when, when, when we're wrong, how we're, we're, we're giving him more glory than, than giving ourselves glory. So when we look here in 28, the very first thing he says to them is that, and he, to, to the prince or the king, he says, because your heart is lifted up and you say that I am a god, I sit in the seat of gods in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a god. Though you set your heart as the heart of a god, he's already going right to the point. He's saying, look, 
you are saying that you're somebody more special than you really are. You are saying that you are God. You're saying you're, you're basically what you're doing is, is you're placing yourself in place of God. Now, how many times have we read in Scripture where we see the pharaohs, right, and there, and, and there was more than one pharaoh. When we read Scripture, there was more than one pharaoh that was talked about. There, there, there was multiple kings, and, and even some of the judges were, where they built themselves up, where they puffed themselves up, where, where they were telling people to worship them as their God, right? Think about when the king of Persia talked to Daniel, when, when, when Daniel, when we read in Daniel, when, and, and they, they had these guys, right? Sorry. When they had these guys who, who, who convinced the king to build an image and convinced them to tell them that when there was certain music played, that people were to bow down and worship the image of the king. And that also with, with what happened is, is that when we see Daniel's the account of Daniel when that happened, what do we see that's happening is that Daniel, right, he already knew that this was what was going on, that when he heard the music, instead of bowing the image down to the image, he went to, into his home and openly worshiped God. Why? Because that's who the true God is. Not any man, not any woman. It's God who is the true God, and that's who we should be worshiping. We don't, we don't need to be putting anybody else in front of God. And a lot of times, something that we need to think about too is a lot of times in our relationships, we put people before God. Amen. And, 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 and they end up becoming gods in our lives, and we have to be careful of that too. Right? There's not one person who take, should take any, it should, in our lives, there's not one person in our lives that should take the place of God. And, and, and if we're finding that we're doing that, we need to be careful. If, if, if we're following somebody because of the way they look, um, I, I, I was praying about this this morning, I was thinking about this, sometimes there's people who peacock, do you guys know what I mean when I talk about peacocking themselves? Peacocking, when you think about this, to, 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 here's the image of a peacock. When you see a peacock, when, we, when we, they're out mating, right, what do they do? They spread their feathers, right, to attract the opposite sex, right? The males, it's the male, I believe it's the males who have the feathers, and they, they spread their feathers to attract the females, right? People tend to do that to, to build a following. And so if we are following people because they're peacocking themselves instead of following them because of them leading us to God, to Christ, then we need to be careful. We're, we're in a sense putting them as God in, in our lives. And we need to be very careful that we're not doing that. Right? Because what happens is, is that what we're going to find is that the more that we put people, we raise people up into these positions where, where they become God in our lives, we're going to find out they're going to fail us. And, and, and when we find out that, and, and when they do fail us, we're gonna we're gonna lose our faith, right? And and and, and what we're what I've heard best said is this: is that if we lose our faith because of the person who we're following, that means that we put our faith in a man instead of God. And how many times have we seen people walk away from the faith of Christianity because they're putting their faith into a man? How many times? I think we think I think we're seeing it more and more often, right? We need to we need to to build our relationship with Christ based on what the Word tells us, based on on, on, on our not only on our study but in prayer, um, in fellowship, and, and and remember that even though that there are leaders of of ministries or, or of churches, right? That that even they are 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 our cohorts or, or people who we walk alongside of. But we got we, we need to continue to lift them in prayer too because it, it, as a leader, they're, they're, God has put on their heart to lead a ministry in a particular direction, right? As, as the writer of Hebrews writes, he said, you would be careful that you don't become a teacher because you'll be going to help be held more accountable, right? That would even apply for leaders. The leaders are going to be held more accountable. So he continues on and he says, 
Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can, that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver to your treasures. By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, the Lord God says, Because you have set your heart as the heart of a god, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. God's already saying, he's, he's saying because you put yourself, and you're setting yourself up, and you're trying to build yourself up, or, or, or as we talk about peacocking yourself to, 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 to have people follow you instead of me. I want to bring people against you where you're going to be knocked off your pedestal. I'm going to bring people, people against you where you're going to be put back into your place. And these are not, and, and these are not going to be necessarily, they're not going to be people in leadership. These are going to be people who, who out of your flock, out of your following, who are going to come in and, and, and put you back into your place. And, and that's, what, that's why we need to be careful that when we're teaching people, when we're talking about um, things of, uh, of the faith, is that we're pointing people to the cross and, and, and pointing them to follow Christ. Remember, Paul said this. Paul said, to follow me as I follow Christ. So, so what he's saying is, is that if I'm not honoring Christ, if I'm not following Christ, then don't follow what I'm teaching. When we look in the book of Acts, right, when they when they, when they went out to the, to the uh, churches to teach, when they came to Berea, what did the Bereans do? Do you guys remember what the Bereans did when they went, went to talk, teach in Berea? They went where? Sorry. To Berea. They checked the word of God to make sure that the word. They checked the word of God daily to be sure what was being taught was correct. So that's that's what we need to, to encourage others to do too, is that we need to be willing to, to teach people, to, to encourage people to not just take our words as we're teaching, as we're leading, but we, we want to direct them into to be in the word, to, to search the word diligently to make sure what is being taught is true, right? So if, if, if I'm trying to lead people in, in, in the faith and I'm, and, I'm being, and I'm being faltering in my, in my leadership because I'm not following Christ, then I hope people would run the other direction, honestly. I can say that now, but, but we, we, that's, that's, where we, that's where we need to be willing to do. And he, here, when we continue on in verse 9, he's kind of even mocking him. He said, will you slay? Will you still say before him who slays you, I am a god? But you shall be a man and not a god in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. So he's saying this, is that even as people come, those who, those who are strangers to you, that as they come and put you in your place, are you going to be able to still say that you're a god? They're putting you in your place, and are you going to argue with them, saying, you know what, you're wrong, I'm right, you need to listen to what I'm saying, and they're coming to you and correcting you, and, and, and I'm using them to correct you. Are you going to be, are you going to still, are you going to be that stubborn? When we look at verses like, we, 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 we see that this is not the first time, nor is it the last time that, that God is correcting leaders. If you turn with me to Matthew chapter 12 with me, we see an account here where, where Jesus is uh, correcting the scribes or the Pharisees. Matthew chapter 12. Starting in verse 38. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. 
For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment against it, with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. So he's correcting them because here, they, here the leaders are saying, how do we know that you're right? And he's already shown them multiple times. How many times? Multiple, multiple times, right? And, and he's saying, he's correcting them and saying, look, you're foolish for wanting signs. Right? And, and, and he's talking to the leaders directly. As people who, as those of us who follow Christ, the more that we grow in, 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 in our relationship with him, we should not have to worry about looking for signs and wonders. Right? Signs and wonders are meant for the, for the unbelievers. We should, already, we should be already walking in that the closer that we, that we get to our Lord, the more that we should understand that what we ask for, he's going to take care of. Right? It may not necessarily be the way that we want it to be taken care of, but it will be taken care of. And, and, and here's something that, that we need to, to be aware of is that there are people out there who say that if you want something to happen in your life, then you need to pray. And if it doesn't happen the way that you want, then you don't have enough faith. Prayer is not about changing God's mind about what's going to happen in your life. It's about God changing our minds about how we're going to follow him. Amen. Right? And so when, when they bring up the scripture about uh, whatever you ask in your, whatever you ask in my name will be done, what Christ is talking about, we have to hear what he says, whatever he, you ask for in my name. So in other words, whatever you ask for that is in line with what God wants will happen. I would say run from those who say that you don't have enough faith if, if things aren't happening the way that you're praying for. Because they're, they're, they're trying to lead you down a, a, a cotton candy faith. We'll call it a cotton candy faith. <laughs> say again? They want to make you feel that it's your fault. Right. Right. Yeah. It make you that you have some part in what God is going to do, and you make you feel bad if you're not right. And then here, after after he after he's rebuking the after after he rebukes the king of Tyre, what does he do? Is he goes into a lamentation. Now remember that when we when, when there's a lamentation and we hear that is it's it's it's, it's um, when we, when we hear about somebody lamenting, we, we hear that we're, we're hearing that their heart is breaking for them, right? Their heart is breaking for them because they're not turning away from, from either the pride or, or, or whatever sin that may be in their lives. And, and, and God laments for us. Believe it or not, God laments for us that our hearts would change and, 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 and we would be growing closer to him. And, and you can take a look at the shortest verse in the Bible. You guys know what the shortest verse in the Bible is? Say it louder, brother. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And the reason why he wept is because he saw the condition of Israel when he went into Jerusalem. And he was saying is that if only you would have changed your hearts and started following me instead of trying to build yourself up, trying to make yourself look good on the outside, you would hear more about what you would hear God even more. He knew the condition of man, because every time we heard about what when people would come against him, he, he we hear that he says that Jesus knew the hearts of men. And, and, and the reason why they would come against him was because he was calling them out. He was telling people about this is what God really wants. If 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 
if we go into if, if, if we go into ministry, if we go into teaching and, and we're building ourselves up, we're being prideful, we're, we're going to lead people astray because now what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people in line with what we want instead of what God wants. We're, we're teaching them that we know better than God, basically. And that's, and that's what God is calling the, 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 king of, the king of here. So in verse 11, he starts over, he starts on, or continues on. And he says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone that was your covenant, the sardis, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold, the workmanship of your temp temples and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were anointed the cherub who covers. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. I believe, I believe, and from what I'm hearing what's being said here is God is literally saying to them, that the, to, to the king of Tyre, with others listening, including us, is that you were perfect when I created you. So he wasn't just talking to the king of Tyre here. He's talking, he was talking to all of us. You were perfect when I created you. Huh? Oh, uh, man. Uh, yeah, but I see in this too also, it sounds like it's a comparison with Satan. Mm -hmm. You know, it's everything that he's saying. That's the way Satan was before he fell. Almost all these things the way he fell. Right. Right, and, 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 and remember that was something else that we talked about last week too, is that the original sin was not necessarily committed by Adam and Eve, but it was considered, com committed by Lucifer, right? And, and so, so, Yes, he's talking, it, 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 it does match up with Lucifer, but it also matches up with us, and he's talking, and he's saying this, look, you are so perfect that that you had the covenant, that you didn't have to worry about anything, that you were basically, you were in paradise. And because the choices that you made, paradise is no longer in existence. A lot of the, the scholars and, 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 and philosophers, Christian philosophers, believe that the reason that we see bad weather, storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, is because of sin. The reason why we see so many murders, we see so many deaths, we see so many people fall into to things is because of sin, right? We're broken. We separated ourselves from God. In a sense, when when God created everything and, 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 and Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they were covered. They were protected. And God gave them the choice and said, you can eat of anything in, the, in this garden except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But as soon as they ate from that, what happened? Fear set in. Anxiety set in. And how do we know that? Because when they ate of it, it said they realized that they were naked. And so when God came calling for them in the garden, what did they do? They went and hid. And God said to them, who told you you were naked? Right? So, so it's not, so there's a picture image here that we got to look at. It's not just the physical nakedness that he's talking about. They realized that they were frail. That, that there, there was this, this idea that they, they were no longer in, in, in God's protection. And, and it's a lot of things that we got to think about is that how many times do we tell ourselves that 
we're not in God's protection and we start allowing anxiety and depression set in. That, that yes, if we walk away from God, if, if we choose to walk in a direction that God doesn't want us to, to walk in, yes, that we're, we're, we're not in his protection. We don't have his covering, right? But how many times are, are we going down in our, we're walking in faith, that we allow the words or the, or the thoughts to come into our minds to start distracting us and that we start filling our, allowing ourselves to be filled with anxiety and depression. We start allowing those thoughts to, to tell us that God isn't there to take care of us. And then we start slipping into a time of sin because then we start thinking that if God is not going to take care of it, then I will. And that's, and that's one of the things I believe that he's talking about here. And he said, and he continues on, he said, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by a multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst and devoured you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. And all who knew you among the peoples were astonished at you. You have become a horror, and it shall be no more forever. He really is saying is that in, in, in this lamentation, he said you became so full, full of pride. Because you started saying, look, look at everything that I built up. Look at everything that I built up. Instead of look at what God has provided. Instead of look how God is working in through us. Me. Look at what I can do. We need to remember that there's nothing that we can do without God being involved in our lives. And then when we start easing God out and start saying that this is what I've done, this is what, this is what, what I accomplished. God might come along and, and, and want that soul out from underneath our feet. And it'll be a hard fall. This is what he did here is he's saying, look, he said, I, I turned you into ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. He, he literally, what he's saying is, is that, I, that I revealed your sins. So that those who, who were following you saw every sin in your life or those sins in your life that you can no longer stand proud and say, look at what, look at me. And all who knew you among the peoples were, are astonished that you, you have become a horror and shall no, be no more forever. So when the sins are revealed, right, so when we build ourselves up in pride and God packs that stool out and our sins are revealed, then those people who we thought were going to be close to us, who were going to follow us to the ends of the earth, they're going to be like, look at this person. I don't want to follow this person because this person, this person is, is they're full of pride, they're full of deceit, they're full of whatever. So again, we, we have to be careful, right? We have to be careful that, that we're, and, and, and realize it's not what we do, it's what God does in our lives. In James chapter four, James writes this in chapter four, he says, but he gives more grace Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So it's a reminder that we need to remain humble. It's 4, verse 6, chapter 4, verse 6. We need to, to, to learn to humble ourselves before our Lord. We need to learn to humble ourselves um, in front of others. 
How many times have we walked around with puffed up with pride and, and that we refuse to admit where we're wrong? What does that do for our relationship with others around us? How many times have we walked around and, and, and refused to admit when we're wrong before the Lord? Try to hide the sin, right? Try to, when God is trying to creep in and, 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 and say, look, look, this is something I want to correct in your life, in your heart, in your mind. And we, and we flee from it. We're like, so that's not going on with me right now. Or it's, it's not something that I, that I struggle with. If, if God said something in our heart and saying, look, this is something I want to correct, it, it's something that we should allow to happen. Because maybe, maybe it's not a struggle that we're having at the moment, but it's something that we should be willing to take a look at and ask the Lord if, if this is something that it's not going to come up in the future so that we can, be a, we can help somebody else. He said, Behold, I'm against you, O Sidon, I will be glorified in your midst, and they shall know that I'm the Lord when I execute judgments in her and am hollow in her, for I will send pestilence upon her and blood in her streets. The wounded shall be judged in her midst by the sword against her on every side, then they shall know that I am the Lord. And there shall no, no longer be a pricking fire or a painful thorn for the house of Israel from among all who are around them who despise them, then they shall know that I am the Lord the Lord God. So again, he's talking against the enemies. Now, he spent some time talking to Tyre, but with Sidon, it's very simple. He said, I'm just going to come against you. And, 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 and I believe what he's saying is, is that he understood that there was no repentance in their hearts. With Tyre, he spoke to them because because I believe that he was saying that there was a possibility that there, there was going to be a change. But with Sidon, he knew there was going to be no change in their hearts. And so he's saying that I'm bringing destruction and I'm going to, and, and I'm going to, I'm just going to remove you. That you're not going to be a thorn in, in, in Israel's sides. And, and we need to remember that there's going to be people in our lives that they're, they're going to be kind of like a thorn, right? A, pr a crippling briar, right? That, that God will remove if we if we allow him, but it's it's not up to us to, to try to remove these people who, who come against us. It's up to God to do that. And, and so we need to, instead of plotting about how we can go against those who come against us, we need to pray for them. We need to pray that maybe that their hearts will be would, would, would change. And we also need to pray and ask God to reveal if there's something going on in our lives or something that's going on on our side that we need to take care of. Because not every time somebody comes against us, it, it, it's because of something that Satan is trying to use to, to stop what we're doing. Sometimes it's something that we're doing. So we need to ask God to, to help us to see if, if there's something that needs to change on our, on our side. And what's really cool when we're closing out this chapter is says, thus says the Lord God, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they were scattered, and am hallowed in them in the sight of all the Gentiles, then they will dwell in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob, and they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgment on those around them who despise them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God. So God is literally saying is that in all the process of this, he's reminding them that he's going to restore Israel. And it should be an encouragement to us too is that in the, despite everything that's going on around us, that when we come and we return back to the Lord, he'll restore us. You know, I was thinking about how cool, how cool it was for God to show how much he loves us and how much he can do for us. That as we're praying this morning, our prayer was answered in the midst of our prayer. Right? And in, 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 in the midst of that, um, 
It's a reminder of how much God loves us. Remember when, when Solomon um, dedicated the temple and he said, when your people return, when they turn away from their sins and they return to, to, to restore them, and if you look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14, what does he say? What is God? This is God's response, right? He said, if my people who are called by my name would turn away from their, turn away from their sins, seek my face, turn away from their sins, pray, then I will restore them. So we're going to seek God. And as we're, as we're seeking him, we turn away from those things that keep us separate. We don't play, we don't play the fence. We jump in full force. I know that in my life, when I made a decision to follow God completely, I said, this is, I'm not going to allow these things to happen. I'm not going to follow these things that so many things have happened, that so many things that God has done in, in, in my life, just for me personally. But in, the, in, the, in what he's done for me personally is been able to help others. But when I start going astray, I start seeing those things not happening. God wants us to, be, to stay on path. He wants us to continue to be fully surrendered to Him. Because when we're fully surrendered to Him, then, then, then He can do so much more in our lives to be able to help other people. It's, again, it's about our hearts. He wants our hearts. It's not, the, it's not the, the things on the outside, it's what's on the inside. Father, we, we again thank you that, that you remind us that, that you seek our hearts, that you seek direction, that you seek for us to seek direction from you. And we invite you in our hearts today and ask you to continue to show us where we need to change, the things that we need to surrender. And if there's anything in our lives that's causing us pride that, that you would show us and reveal it to us so that we can turn away from it. Because we don't want you to be separate from us. But we know that when we allow pride to come into our lives that we're, we're, we're separating ourselves from you. Help us to continue to grow closer to you. Help us to remember to put you first in everything that we do in our lives. Help us to remember that there's nothing that we can do without you. Thank you for loving us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise to me and receive a closing blessing.
we do to bless each other. God bless you guys.